made a brief uh, sermon today and to tell you, number one, that JS77 is right about one thing. It is about faith alone that saves you. You can't do anything uh, or impress God. You can't earn your way to heaven. But what is real faith and what is real belief? I told you in my last video, there are two different types of belief. Look up the Greek word for pastuo meaning reliance upon or trust in, and then there's a belief as in such an I believe that George Washington existed, but I don't put my faith or my trust in him. Holding faith in a good conscience, which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. So what does holding faith mean? Which JS 77 denies even exists and will cast anyone into hell that believes this truth. To continue to believe in, this is what holding faith means, to continue to believe in, trust, or support someone or something or in someone, in plainer words, as the Bible lays out so clearly, holding faith means continue. JS 77 boasted years ago, he was he did a phone interview with, I believe it was Sin City Preacher. Show me that. Show me where it says continue in the faith of the Bible. That's not the Bible. Continuing in the faith. Very argumentative about it. And, and as usual, he has a tongue on fire from hell. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. There, okay, I just showed it to you in the Bible. Acts 14.22, again, exhorting them to continue in the faith. So he goes around and tells people you can stop believing and go out and kill people. Well, number one, he doesn't have real faith. He has a belief in a system, in some facts, but it hasn't changed. It's, it's up here but it hasn't changed his heart. And 99.9% 99 .9 of what he teaches or preaches is, uh, I can't even, I, I can't even watch him because his prayers are useless. His prayers are completely useless. And he says, anyone that tries to make Jesus Christ my Lord is going to hell. There's, there's no place in the Bible where it says, uh, Jesus has to be my Lord. And there's over... 60 places. Okay, I'll say it again. Exhorting them to continue in the faith. If you will fear the Lord and serve him and obey his voice and not rebel against the commandment of the Lord, then shall both ye and also the king that reigneth over you continue following the Lord your God. Let that therefore abide in you, meaning stay in you. That means to continue. Let that therefore abide in you. It stays in you. Which ye have heard from the beginning. If that if that which ye have heard from the, the beginning shall remain in you, ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. So to say, you can stop believing, but right here it just says, ye shall continue in the Son and the Father, if you keep that which you have heard them from the beginning. But he's saying you can stop believing. You can even become an, an atheist or a Buddhist or go out and kill people, be a murderer or a sodomite and go right on into heaven. He believes he's incapable of going to hell. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. 1 Timothy 4.16 Meaning, cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear, for some people have deliberately violated their consciences. Remember the Bible talks about a seared conscience. As a result, their faith, that type of faith, has been shipwrecked. Those who directly violate the truth and go against 
what many of them know in their hearts is wrong, but they grow a seared conscience. That faith has been shipwrecked, meaning it's sunk, it's useless. What is a good conscience? A good conscience is a healthy conscience. It is one that is cleared of offenses toward God and toward people. It gives boldness and confidence in the Christian believer's life, and it is the one thing that will keep us going during storms of persecution. I can assure you he is not being persecuted. He will never, ever tell you that he comes under attack. He may say he comes under attack from people that are uh, trying to tell you uh, OSIS KJV or uh, once saved, always saved. Uh, anyone that uh, doesn't teach or preach what he's saying is going to hell. So he believes that's persecution. I'm talking about from the outside world. Remember, uh, Jesus said, the world has hated me, it will also hate you. So what is faith? Hebrews 11.1, 1, and does it produce? I'll show you in what is known as the Hall of Faith. That's Hebrews 11. Of course, you're not going to see too many sermons by Rene Roland or JS77 about Hebrews, as in their theology, they believe in their minds, well, Hebrews was written for the Jews, not the Gentiles. What does the Bible say? All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. So what is faith and what does it produce and what does Romans 4, 4 through 5 mean? I'll go over that. In case you want to try and put that in the comment section, I'll tell you what that means as well. Now faith is, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I just told you what real faith is in the Lord Jesus Christ. What is faith? The evidence of things not seen, substance of things hoped for. So they believe if there's any evidence or actions or lifestyle change required, that's a lie. The Bible just said, now you want to believe them or the Bible? It's up, I'm reading to you out of the Bible. Faith is substance, evidence. So they take the word works totally out of context. It means evidence, actions of someone who's truly believed they've been transformed. Something exists in that person's life that was not there before. The Holy Ghost has moved into this person. They believe what is the truth, and they continue to believe in it, and it has totally transformed them. Why else would the Bible say walk in the newness of life if you're still walking in your old man, nonstop, no remorse, no repentance? Then you're still the old man. You're yet to become a born-again Christian, and you can't understand the KJV. The natural man cannot discern the th things of the Spirit, neither can he know them, for they are foolishness unto him. The Spirit must discern the Bible for you. The natural man can understand it. It's like trying to read a Chinese cookbook upside down. So what is reliance or trust in? Real faith. Reliance, trust in, confidence in, total belief with no doubt or wavering. And this produces a conversion, a.k.a. the new birth and a new heart. Look at Ezekiel 36.26. New heart I will give you and a new spirit will I put within you. So listen to JS 77. Does this person sound like someone Jesus would have as his disciple? Think about that question for a second. Do you think Jesus would have this filthy, wretched rock music playing, defecating sound making, vile, filthy, tongue set on fire from hell as one of his disciples. I want you to ask him. Say, would you want to be one of Jesus' disciples? Ask him that. And even if you attempt to obey God, you're going to hell. 
living like the devil and being saved. All Christians love sinning. These are all titles of his sermons. Well, believe this. God saw their works. This is in Jonah. Their actions, which was to repent. That they turned from their evil way and God repented of the evil. That means he didn't do it. That he said that he would do unto them and he did it not. A quick fruit few proofs of what faith does and did in these people from the Bible. And this is just from Hebrews 11, showing you that faith produces substance and evidence, real faith. By faith, here's what Abel did, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. By faith, being warned of things not seen as yet, Noah moved with fear, that's an action, prepared an ark, that's an action, that's evidence that he believed what God was telling him to do. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out. And what did he go out to do? He went out to offer up Isaac. He offered up his son. That is an action. Through faith, also herself, Sarah, received strength to conceive seed. She what? She judged him faithful who had promised. She believed God. By faith, Jacob, when he was dying, blessed both the sons of Joseph and worshipped, leaning upon these are actions. These are things that they did by faith. They did these things. I'm not saying they did these things to obtain eternal life. They knew it because they believed in God and they had eternal life. And these are some of the things that they did that indicated that they had true faith. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused. That's an action. Refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. By faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not. When she had received the spies with peace, she knew what God had been doing. Uh, and she had heard the report of all the things that uh, the Jews were doing. And so she believed. She believed. She put her faith in God. Had she not, why would she receive these men with peace? And her, fa her entire family was spared. JSX continues to mock the word of God. That's the only thing he continues in. Handles the word of God deceitfully, makes defecating sounds, and plays demonic rock music, and casts people into hell all week, and casts Calvinists into hell at least once a week. I'm not a Calvinist. Yes, we know, JS77, Calvinism is a false doctrine. You're also... Is a, is a false doctrine. I'm not lordship. I'm not easy believism. I'm not primitive Baptist. I'm not a Mennonite. I'm not Amish. I'm a born again believer. That's it. No, I'm not lordship. No, I'm not Calvinist. JS 77, like I said, here's one of his sermons Living like the devil and being saved. Living like the devil and being saved. Well, if I was the devil and I'm living like the devil, then why am I? What's the point of even being saved? I'm the devil. Do you want to act like a devil? And you think that the Lord, come on in. Step right up. I'm so glad you continued in the, in the sins that I tried to free you from. When I took all, when I tasted death for every man and took all the sins of the world upon me. That I, I'm so offended that you tried to turn from those sins that caused me such anguish and I was crushed on the cross. How dare you even try and repent or obey my Father in heaven? How dare you? Go straight to hell. Now, you really think that Jesus would say that? We don't obey God or trust in God or do things that we think are right in the eyes of God to get saved. We do, we do these things as evidence that we have been saved. 
To them, there needs to be no evidence. The reason you fall for this, Paul makes it very crystal clear. For the time will come when they will not endure. You can't handle it. Sound doctrine. But after their own lusts, that means just keep what you're doing, whatever it makes you feel good, whatever it may be, after your own lusts, whenever it is that pleases you, they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They shall turn their ears away from the truth and unto fables, meaning lies. I've been to some of these people's pages that follow him and have seen on one, he had over 200, 200 different channels. Yankee Arnold, Greg Jackson, Renee Rowland, uh, Wretched Knucklehead, which I believe he's changed his uh, username. All these different, I mean, talk about heaping teachers to themselves. Let the Lord Jesus Christ be your teacher. So, what's the end result? JS 77 has already blasphemed the Holy Ghost. I wouldn't take that back. If someone offered me $10 billion, I wouldn't take it back. Because I'm telling you, the Lord told me that. What's the end result for you if you continue down this road and continue to follow this false teacher? 2 Thessalonians 2.12 That they all might be damned who believed not the truth but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Remember, Christians love sinning. You sin more after you saved. That's what he says, and you believe it. So now let's go here to Romans 4, 4 through 5. For your excuse or for your justification, just to keep living any way you want. And you say, well, we're just going to lose rewards or be chastened. But you said, remember, nanosecond of faith, no continuing required. Hey, you can even go out and kill people and stop believing. What a great preacher. So here we go. For what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God. And I just showed you what it was that Abraham did. He offered up his son Isaac. He had faith. He had real belief. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned. Is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt? But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifieth the ungodly, his faith is counted for righteousness. So what is counted for righteousness? His faith. And what is faith? Well, if you've been watching for the last 17 minutes and 59 seconds, I just showed you what real faith is. And if you don't have real faith, then your faith is in vain. I'll go over that in just a second. To truly belong to the people of God, a person must be changed in the heart. What does JS 77 say about believing in the heart? Believing in the heart is nonsense. So he says directly against what the Bible says. Believing in the heart is nonsense. Of course it is to him, because everything he has is up here. And everything he has is in vain that he thinks. That's not what the Bible says. For with the heart one believeth and is justified. For with the heart, not the mind. Now, that the believer does not work at all, but not from such principles and with such views as the other. He does not work in order to obtain life and salvation. He does not seek for justification by his doings, but his doings are a result of real faith, real belief. He imputes the righteousness of another, even that of his own son, unto them, and though he justifies the ungodly, he does not justify their ungodliness, but them from it, nor will he, nor does he leave them to live and die in it. There's dead to sin and dead in sins. Paul said such were some of you, that whole list that Paul goes through, talking about sodomites as well, idolaters, all this, that list that Paul, go to 1 Corinthians 6, 9. Uh, but JS 77 says, you still are. You're still, you can sin all you want. When it says, Paul, go to Romans chapter 6, destroys JS 77, and he knows it. 
Tell them to do a, a sermon on Romans chapter 6. See how that goes. Suggest that on his page. See how fast you get blocked. It says you still are in your sins and should stay in your sins. It's offensive to God, like Renee Rowland says. It's offensive to God if you try and turn from sin. Nothing needs to change, he says. Even gays who do not turn from being gay will go to heaven when the Bible says otherwise. You have been fooled by a person who is using you to justify his own wicked lifestyle. I guarantee you he does not love you. I challenge you to say, I love you, Brother JS77. Just see how he responds or if he responds or if he even clicks a little heart thing. Say, I just wanted to say, JS77, I love you, brother. See what he says. I challenge you. Whoever you has made it this far, 21 minutes into this, do that if you want the truth. Challenge. I challenge you. And if JS77, if you've listened this far, do the challenge I've told you. Show your face for the first time. Get on. And don't say you can't do it. You go around filming little girls all the time that the pedophile that you are. Turn the camera on yourself and show them your face. Stop with the excuses. Turn the camera on your own face. You have a demon inside of you, JS77. You have, you have blasphemed the Holy Ghost and you are going to hell. That is a fact and there's no getting away from it. There's no forgiveness in this world nor in the world to come. You have blasphemed the Holy Ghost. The Lord has confirmed that to me. I will never, ever renounce that fact that God told me, you blaspheme the Holy Ghost. I'm not even allowed to say your name. Not only does this person not have agape love, he certainly does not love you, and he is not preaching the truth. He is a false teacher with a false doctrine. Considering his tongue that is set on fire from hell, James. Oh, this is not a, a book they like, James. If any man among you seem to be religious, their belief system, but cannot bridle, stop their own tongue from cursing, uh, getting angry nonstop. Yeah, we all uh, get triggered every now and then, say something, which say, God. Lord, I shouldn't have said that. I'm sorry. We're talking about remorse-free, repent-free. I'll talk how I want. I'll curse how I want. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion, religion meaning belief system, is in vain. This person has deceived their own heart. He's deceived himself to the point of where he has a seared conscience to the point where he crossed the red line to the point where he blasphemed the Holy Ghost. And you are blessing him. You're saying God bless you. Look in 2 John 1, 9. You're not abiding in sound doctrine. You have to have the Father and the Son. He that has the Son has life. He that does not have the Son does not have life. If you are not abiding in sound doctrine, Staying in Christ, then you do not have the Son. And you must have the Son in order to have eternal life. So I'm telling you, friends, if you don't turn away from this false teacher, not only will you not go to heaven, you will not be annihilated. There is no such thing as annihilationism. My guess is that very few of you, if any of you, that follow this person fear the Lord in any kind of way. If you did, you certainly would not follow this wicked person. I've tried so many times after uploading these videos to say, please, Lord, let that be the last one, because it just it, it, it grieves me knowing there's so many dozens of, or hundreds possibly of you out there listening to him and believing him instead of the word of God. So I will ask you this and you have to answer it. 
Choose ye this day whom you will serve. And you must be born again. Which in his title of his sermon, only unsaved devils say you must be born again. So I guess I'm an unsaved devil because I just told you you must be born again. And who said that to Nicodemus in John chapter 3? 